Ethics waivers are granted to members of the White House staff, which brings up the question, why are we draining the swamp anyway? Meanwhile, Vladimir Putin praises Donald Trump on being straightforward and frank in his thinking and talk. And in the process, Donald Trump withdraws the U.S. from the Paris Accord, as he promised, even though many people asked him not to do it anyway. Those are some of the big stories we talked about in conversations. Although it wasn't all Trump-focused, Trump got a lot of work yesterday for the day, that being the first day of June. So today, we're doing the daily recap for June the 2nd, 2017. And welcome to the podcast. My name is Jay Clifton Payne, your moderator for This Is The Conversation.com and this podcast, the Daily Recap Podcast. And coming up in just a bit, we'll tape the weekend wrap up podcast as well. Main function of this podcast is to make sure that we are covering some of the best topics, the best conversational pieces in the world with the best people in the world. That's you out there via the internet and our website, this is the conversation.com. Now go to that website and check out a couple great features we have at the website. We have a link for you to join what we call our conversation survey panel. It is a listing to get you on a list for paid surveys, some paid surveys, some just informational surveys, but you can get your opinion can get a little money in your pocket by going to our website. Also, we ask you to check out our sponsors, it helps us keep the lights on, so to speak, to make sure that uh, we can keep things going. The bills get paid, and you get to see great conversations and great pieces from us. In fact, the conversational sponsors we have are hopefully ones that will help you out in things that you're really looking for. We try to pick very, very good ones, ones that can offer you great deals and not just uh, jump on the bandwagons searching for the ones that everyone's talking about. So we want the best sponsors with the best conversations. We hope we have them at our website as well. Check out the sponsors links and see if one of our sponsors can help you take care of some need you have right now. Of course, to follow the conversations in real time, that's how we know when the best ones are, you go to our Twitter feed, which is TH underscore conversation, or on Facebook, look for this is the conversation.com or just comment in the website itself as the comments pop up on social media. Uh, one is copied to the website. You can go to the website and you can get email versions of that world. Send you email when a new one comes up and you can respond right there in kind right there on the website. Give us any information, any feedback you like. We'd love it so we know what we're doing well and not so well so we can get a little bit better. Right now, let's quickly get into the tweets for the day or the messages, the conversations we had for the day of yesterday. The first one we opened up the day with was on Mr. Met. Mr. Met dealing with some issues, or at least the guy inside the Mr. Met costume. A Wednesday night game had him caught on video coming out of the tunnel uh, somewhere inside the um, opening sessions of the ball game. Uh, No one knows exactly what was said to Mr. Met, but uh, even though he only has four fingers, he was able to shoot him one finger, and that finger was a universal message, although... The defense is, since Mr. Met only has four fingers, technically he can't really give someone the middle finger. Doesn't matter, the guy in the costume that night was fired, so Mr. Met not getting the axe, but the guy inside the suit got the axe on Wednesday night. Thursday, there was a new Mr. Met, although he looked exactly like the same old Mr. Met. This was a story that we stumbled upon that got a little bit of love, a little bit of, uh, of, of conversation and respect, uh, but didn't grow too much, which we thought, but we thought it was interesting. Insurance companies deny treatment to patients in states uh, where they offer assisted suicide are often offered assisted suicide payments. That's right. In some states where assisted suicide is a thing, where it's actually legal, States are declining some of the more risky or more long-term deals for treatments, but offering people assisted suicide treatments or assisted suicide payments to help pay for that. Uh, Something that has not been talked about in Obamacare, although it's something that may need to be discussed if this is something that's serious going to happen. If they're looking at really, really, really saving some dollars, this would be a way to save some dollars. Uh, Morbidly speaking, that's the one way to do that. So, unfortunately, in these big conversations, a lot of things get miss, missed out and a lot of things get t- cut to the side because they're not as sexy or they're just uh, seen sort of macabre. And this is one that we thought was really odd that in a state that has assisted suicide, you might get assistance for that. But if you have like an ongoing illness, they may not pay for that. They'll pay to have you die, but not to live. Take it as you will. 
Meanwhile, an ethics waiver was granted to 14 members of the White House staff. This, as the story came down, was 14. When it was all said and done uh, over the course of the day, that number turned to 17 members of the White House staff. And some of those were just waivers that were essentially extended from what they already had. Some people granted new waivers so they can go off and do business with some of the entities that Donald Trump said they would not do business with. This was waivers so they can do non-government things, do other things, essentially make a little extra money on the side from their government jobs. Now, draining the swamp was the big uh, push by Donald Trump, uh, essentially saying that people that work for the government weren't going to use those government ties and flip them around instantly to get some offshore job. But the government, or at least Donald Trump, essentially allowing at least 17 people in his White House directly working for him to do some extra work on the side right now with some of those other entities. Our most popular conversation yesterday was this one, which... Didn't completely surprise me, but the fact that the other ones didn't get even close to it is what really got to me. And that was Kyrie Irving. Kyrie Irving, the number two guy on the roster for the Cleveland Cavaliers. He was the number one when drafted as a rookie to sort of take the team over and build, rebuild it back from what LeBron James had after he left. But then LeBron James had to come back for them to get their championship. Look, Kyrie Irving is the cover athlete for the standard edition of NBA 2 K18. That is the essentially the only NBA licensed game for all the gaming consoles, PlayStation and Xbox, and whatever else it, that there may be. PlayStation and Xbox essentially run the gamut of the gaming life. Now, if you pay a little extra money, you want to get some extra um, deals into your your downloads. You can buy the Legend Edition, and there's actually two Legend Editions, and those will feature Shaq, Shaquille O'Neal. On the cover, one has Shaq in his Heat jersey. The other has Shaq in his Lakers jersey. So a little extra cash will get you some extra features in the Shaq Legends Edition uh, NBA 2K18. Now the 2K18 series, uh, which is a, we used to be a rival with the EA series, but there's were some contracting issues. So basically, one gets the contract, one doesn't for a sport. Is um, doesn't have with it the stigma of the whole um, the whole. The curse thing, the EA curse, the Madden curse, essentially, whoever gets on the cover of John Madden's NFL game from EA Sports essentially has something really weird happen with them. That's this season. Of course, this year it is Tom Brady, and we're pretty sure no curse can take down Tom Brady. But many others have tried to be on the cover, and many others have been well, succumbed to some sort of curse. The 2K series uh, for the NBA apparently does not have that stigma, and people very, very happy to be on the cover of that game. Vladimir Putin uh, gets in Trump news by praising Donald Trump for his straightforward talk and his frankness in what he's saying. I'm going to leave that at that as you will, because the next story was on Trump as he withdrew the U.S. from the Paris Accord. Now, the mix the two together is really too easy to do, but uh, there's really a lot of sympathy back and forth from the Kremlin and from D.C., on Putin and on Trump when a lot of people were leaders that were really friendly to us and essentially not even essentially they were our allies are shaking their heads wondering what exactly is going on in the minds of this new guy it doesn't seem to make any sense in fact many Americans say it doesn't seem to make any sense but he's the one that somehow was elected to be president the one put in charge and he gets a chance to make the not so much make the rules but to enforce them because that's what the executive branch does However, he seems to think he can make the rules and break the rules and do what he wants to, and that's how things go. In this case, he withdrew from a Paris Accord, a treaty, a, if you will, more of a statement on climate change. We are now along the lines of Nicaragua, which oddly enough wishes the treaty went further, and Syria, which is ruled by a dictator who uses chemical weapons against his own people in the Civil War. The only the three of us are the only nations of note that aren't in this accord including, well, Russia, who wasn't actually asked. So now what this does is creates a vacuum in leadership in climate change, and China, oddly enough, a nation that has pretty serious issues with climate, is, is trying to step up to take over the leadership of pushing climate change and the environmental agenda. I'm not sure what kind of deal Trump thinks that's going to work out to, but I guess we shall see. 
The internet erupted this week. We had a lot of deaths that went through uh, this week, and we'll have plenty of them in the weekend wrap-up coming up, which I'll record in about an hour from the time I'm done with this one. But uh, the internet was pretty happy with this death, and it wasn't a real death. It was Johnny Depp's death, or his character's death, in the new version of Murder on the Orient Express. You get to see the trailer with all the famous people doing the famous parts for the very famous book. I'm not going to give any more plot details other than the fact that you know there's a train full of strangers, one person dies, and the most uh, in- incredible detective, the best detective in the world essentially, happens to be on the train and he figures out who commits the murder. You have to either read the book or check out the movie to see what happens. Although there have been a lot of shifts in the endings in books to movies lately, if you've seen The Circle and read The Circle, uh, you'll know there's a pretty dramatic shift in how that ended, but that's, not a course. that's of course, kind of how things go. You know how the book goes. You're trying to see what the interpretation is for the main audience, people who don't expect an ending because they read a book. Fourteen more billionaires join the list with Bill Gates and Warren Buffett to give away more than half their money. Now, going through the list is a useless thing, but the list is a fairly extensive list of billionaires, people with lots and lots of money who have pledged when they die not to just hand it off to all their kids or just let it uh, go into some sort of weird company foundation, but to go to charitable acts, go to world initiatives, go to art, go to science, go to feeding people, but going to these large batches of money to help to make the world a better place because you can't take it with you so why let it sit around on on your deathbed or your death that's what they're thinking uh, but of course you have to be a billionaire to join this club and 14 new ones are in this specific club we talked about Mary Kay Letourneau's husband and the div- the divorce uh, that he well the separation that he actually filed not quite divorce yet well we thought there might be some issues, you know, 20 years into this whole relationship, but apparently everything is hunky-dory in the Laterno household, or I guess the whatever household you want to call it. Why is the man splitting from his husband, his husband, his, hus- his wife? Why is the young dude splitting from his older wife? Well, because Mary Kay Letourneau is a registered sex offender. That's what happened when she um, had relations with him back when he was 12. And so for all these 20, 30-odd years, she's been a registered sex offender. And that makes it hard for him to open up its dispensary to sell marijuana cigarettes. Yes, being a registered sex offender is bad for business. And so by divorcing his wife legally, he doesn't have to deal with her being an issue for him financially in this case. But the family, they're doing pretty hot, pretty okay, and they just want to make a little extra cash selling the weed in. The kid has to divorce his wife to make that happen. Okay. This is a first. We had a message that had zero, zero reaction whatsoever. And this is one that was pretty hot and heavy on the Internet uh, for a while. So it might have been the placement, but it might have just been the people that were in our conversations didn't particularly care for the subject. And the subject is LeBron James more specifically Jason Whitlock, the very outspoken uh, sports commentator who said that LeBron James, after he spoke out on this, his uh, dealing with racism this week, someone uh, vandalizing house, his house in L.A., putting racial slurs on it, saying that LeBron James doesn't have to deal with real racism because he's not poor. Racism is a poor man's problem. People who don't have the funds to leave the situation uh, have to deal with racism because they, they literally cannot get away from it. LeBron James, by by virtue of being rich and famous, can move to another house, can have this house repaired, can pay the money he needs to track down people who did this and have it done. So technically, he doesn't deal with racism, at least not in the way poor people do, because he has an out. This had absolutely no impressions, no response, no engagement whatsoever on any of the social media, which was interesting. I found very interesting um, and it definitely telling in what we will cover next time. We definitely won't be hanging our heads on a big response for Jason Whitlock in the future. There's a massive crack in the Antarctic ice shelf. It's grown 11 miles in six days. And since this story, we posted it from the conversations that happened yesterday or the day before, I should say. There was actually a post from a story that was posted on Wednesday, I believe. We've learned that this big crack of ice will be is turned into an ice shelf about the size of Delaware that's going to break off of Antarctica 
uh, essentially any day now. We'll see a big, massive ice float happen soon. And what that will mean for the continent and for the nation and for the world, we'll, we'll definitely see. But this ice crack, which grew from nothing, essentially, to 11 miles long, when now is eventually going to knock off a piece of ice about the size of Delaware. Six days ago, 11 miles in the crack, and now it's days away from floating away from the actual continent. Pioneering actress uh, Elena Verdugo of Marcus Welby, M.D., passed away at 92. Now, she was one of the uh, first major Latina actresses to be on a series here in the States, uh, which was, of course, Marcus Welby, a very famous show way, way, way back in the day, which was, um, you know, a doctor show. The doctor, Marcus Welby, did his things for the people, and he had a nurse on the show, played by Elena Verdugo. She was a, a pioneer by being on that show. She passes away uh, early this week at the age of 92. And our first message of the day, uh, late on the draw on this one because I honestly didn't stay up for the game, but the Warriors take game one versus the Cavaliers in the NBA Finals, and they took it in pretty good fashion. They were able to uh, put the gas on their offense and stifle the uh, Cleveland defense. So Golden State takes this one, and they win by about 20 three points or so so it was an amazing game pretty high scoring affair but when it's all said and done the Warriors who this season are playing the villain in the finals uh, do strike first blood and of course since they opened up in Oakland that means we don't get a taco because Cleveland had to win that game it's still a chance remember Taco Bell will give us all the nation a free taco if one team can steal a game from the other team's home so tomorrow night or Sunday night Cleveland Cavaliers have a chance to get us a taco by getting the game two in Oakland. We'll see how that works out. And those are the conversations we had all day yesterday for Thursday the 1st. Today is June the 2nd, and we'll have plenty of great Friday conversations. We won't talk about them, though, until Monday when we do the daily uh, rap recap podcast for Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We take a little time off in recording, and in about an hour we will set up to record our weekly wrap-up podcast where we go through the entire week and give you the top 10 and then the ones that didn't quite make it, things that were, we think are pretty important, pretty cool, pretty interesting. Probably not going to talk about that Jason Whitlock one, though, because no one seemed to care about that one. But we'll record that for the weekend. That will be released on Saturday morning, and we are working to get some interviews with some newsmakers to kind of pad out that podcast a bit. In the meantime, if you enjoyed this podcast, make sure you subscribe so you get this one and the weekend one and all of our daily podcasts so you can see what we chatted about. You can join the chat, the conversation in real time, by responding via social media. When we post something out there, let us know what you think. It's social media is on Twitter at TH underscore conversation and Facebook. This is a conversation dot com. The main website, this is a conversation, is also where you can have the same conversations as well. Make sure you stop by our website and sign up for our conversation survey panel. Make sure you get your opinions in and we could pay you for some of those. And check out our great sponsors to help us keep things going on here. The more information about things I have going on along the way, check out my website, jclevenpain.net. And once again, thank you for being here for this year podcast. We'll have another daily recap, which of course will be three days on Monday, and the weekend recap, which will be released on Saturday morning. Thank you for being in the conversation and just being you. We can't do this without you being exactly who you are. We'll talk to you again in the future on the websites, in social media, and of course in the podcast.